If you think about it, this little guy here has been around for most of the Industrial Revolution and it's still in a workshop today doing, you know, working on a daily basis. Amazing. Start over here with this one. So, Uncle Al, word on the street is you, you've got some vices. Feed me that line again. What do you mean, smoking and that? Yeah. No, we're talking about real vices today. Um, we thought we'd kind of like introduce you to a few of my good friends in the uh, workshop. <laughs> Jesus. So. Oh, hi Mark. Yeah. I'm glad you came. I wanted to talk to you about one of my little problems. Uh, I seemingly have a bit of a vice issue. V-I-C-E, not V-I-S-E. Yeah? I don't think V-I-S-E is a word, mate. Isn't it? No. Oh, crap. I wonder why he's so eager to go to the garage. The garage? Hey, fellas, the garage. Well, ooh la dee da, Mr. Frenchman. Well, what do you call it? A car hole. I absolutely love this vice, but I think what Mark will be showing you is over here, We this is maybe kind of starting to show you the beginning of my vice problem. So um, I can't pass these things up. If I see a vice that's a little bit interesting, I have to buy them. Anyone who has a workshop knows how this is like your third hand, sometimes your third and fourth hand. Um, anyway, look, you'll be familiar with this. I use this vice every single day. Um, I bought this at a farm auction and this is gonna make some people absolutely sick on YouTube. Do you know how much I spent and how much that cost me? Tell us. Less than $30. Obviously it's a leg vice. Um, Loads, loads of people kind of, um, you'll see loads of people on YouTube using these. This is a particularly big one. Um, let me get rid of my pipe. Um, seven inch jaws. I mean, it weighs an absolute ton. You can see, look at the size of it. But these are brilliant for blacksmithing and I'd highly recommend if you can find one, hunting them out, because this is superb. There's no maker's mark on this one, um, but it is getting towards the biggest, the largest size of leg vice that they made. I think they made them with nine inch jaws. And then there's some really bizarre ones that are like this big, you know, absolute kind of monsters. But this is an absolute workhorse. Probably dates from about, I mean, it could date from any time from 1850 onwards. And you know, to think that it's now 2000 and nearly 20, and I'm still using this every single day. They, not that I do it with this vice, they can take an incredible amount of kind of punishment. Um, not that I suggest you sit there and start whacking this with a sledgehammer, you know. Um, these are forged when they're made, so it's a really strong method of making them. This one's got a bit of a wobble when you tighten things up. The, the kind of the jaws tend to roll a little bit, but you know, I don't mind that because I'm not doing, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a commercial kind of proposition, this vice. I love using it. One thing, I tell you what though, this, this huge thing, you've got this kind of like, you know, swinging kind of, you know, I do think you have to be a little bit careful with these, with these great big, obviously this is like a pry bar for tightening it, so you can get that incredible amount of tightness on there. You know, sometimes, I mean, I literally kind of grab it and I'm pulling on it like this to get something tight in there. So it's really got some holding pressure. Something else to be aware of is if you're kind of working on this and your hands anywhere near here I have done it before where that bar has dropped and nicked my skin and let me tell you that came up with a blood blister That's the scar from it there. It kind of trapped my finger in there and wow Came up um, that only happened about three weeks ago, but I'm you have to be quite careful using these But they are an amazing tool. I mean just look at it. It's just so Massive isn't it? Look at all the detail on it. Like the little stopped chamfers there, you know, when it's been forged because the You know, whoever's made it has just taken so much time to kind of add that aesthetic element that seems to be lacking in so many tools today 
beautiful thing, beautiful thing. And it's, com well, I think it's missing its leg, but I don't really mind. You can just see, I mean, it's, you know, what a piece of kit. So, I mean, here's another example. This, this is what I did have before. And again, absolutely compete. Uh, this is quite interesting. I don't know if Mark can get in there to see that, that maker's plate. Can you see it there? No, oh, we're getting there. Yeah, what does it say? All day in onions. Anchor brand, drop forged vice, Birmingham. And look at all these little details here, all these beautiful little stopped chamfers, these turned elements here. Um, again, look at this, you know, the kind of, that's actually, I think that's a, that, what's that 12 in Roman numerals? So I think that's like a, uh, what they call a assembly number. So Mr. 12 made this one, or this was the 12th one made on that day. All day in onions, funnily enough. I think are the first or one of the first companies in the UK to produce a motor vehicle. Um, this is complete, um, slightly smaller than the big one, uh, five inch jaws, which is still pretty big. I've made a pair of very crude uh, copper jaws for this one, just so I don't mar things when I'm marking it. But. It's just absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? I think this one was a little bit more expensive. I think this was about 30 quid, so maybe $40. But there's nothing, there is nothing like using these vices. They're absolutely fantastic. This one I've had to completely to pieces, cleaned it all up, oiled it, uh, just made sure everything was kind of functioning. So this one probably dates to about 1890, something like that. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll pop this one to one side and we'll have a look at a couple of others, eh? A record number 75. So this is probably from about, where would you say? 1920s, maybe, no, probably not actually. This is, I'm gonna start that again. This one probably dates from about the 1930s. Um, what are the jaws on that one? Five and a quarter inch. Uh, you'll notice they're offset to one side, and I don't know if you notice that, but they, they kind of, the jaws are offset, so it gives you the ability to kind of clamp long pieces of, uh, long pieces of steel on that side. This side here actually incorporates uh, a pipe bender. So there's a little bending jig there, so you can clamp your pipe in it, and there you go, you've got like a pipe bending element. This one also, uh, which I'm kind of wondering if this might be useful for engraving, which is something I hope to get into, but there you go, this one actually swivels. This one I found at a farm, I offered to buy it from the farmer. What I've done then is one of the screws was broken off in the jaw, so I've had to replace that, so I've essentially it's the same original jaws, but I have had to replace these bolts and re-tap the jaws for uh, a modern metric thread. Have I detracted from the value of the vice? I don't think I really have. That one is going to go in the new workshop for definite. I mean these, you'll see this quite often with these vices, and like I'm sure you've seen this one in the background, but we'll get to in a minute, but um, you know these little anvil kind of things, and you know what would I say about them? fundamentally don't do any hard forging work on those because I think realistically you're just asking for trouble you're going to snap that off it's going to ruin the vice they're not really meant for that I don't think these will be cast iron so it's a little bit more brittle has it got the cramp clamping pressure of a leg vice no it hasn't could you beat the hell out of a piece of steel on this yes you could but you're probably going to destroy it or you're going to break something or something's going to chip or snap um, this one funnily enough has got this little insert here which is actually a really a hardened carbon steel insert which is meant to kind of give you that ability to kind of do very light forge work but I mean let's have a little look at that what is that that's like an anvil that is 35 mil by 60 mil so what the hell are you going to be kind of like forging on there I'd say again steer, steer clear of using vices with anvils get yourself an anvil or get yourself a chunk of metal you don't really care about but don't try and forge with something like this because you'll break it and at that point it's just pure scrap um, it's a lovely thing again I've had this one to bits and I kind of tend to take them to bits this one I gave a light spray to uh, just to kind of because there was a lot of surface rust on it 
um, just to kind of just protect it really. I did the same with this actually. This has got a light lacquer, so is the other leg vise that I've put away now. So great little vise. It's, it's quite useful to have that swivel, have that swivel, that ability to turn it round. I think what that tells me is that this wants to be mounted on the corner of a table, kind of like so. And then you've got that ability to kind of swing it around and work on it from two different angles if you need to. What you find with these, and something to check if you see one, is I wouldn't necessarily be paying hang on, I wouldn't necessarily be paying huge amounts for, of money for these if these are broken off. You see a lot of these with these little lugs snapped off, and what someone will tell you is, oh, you can find them, you can still get them. No, you can't. If they're broken off, you know, pay scrap value. I wouldn't be paying kind of the 150 quid mark for them. So, original jaws are in there. Lovely little vise, nice English one. Big old stamp there, made in England, which I absolutely love. Record number 75 auto vise, I think they're called. This one's all steel, wow. So it isn't cast iron, sorry, but still it'll be fragile. I won't go beating the crap out of it. I'll pop this one away out of the way so we can talk about the others. Here we go. So we're starting to get up into the kind of bigger end of the market. What is it? It's a Parkinson's Model F. Oh, it's a number eight. I thought it was a number nine. Yeah, so this is a Parkinson's Model F number eight vice. These are one size shy of the biggest vice. So these are one size shy of the biggest size that Parkinson's did. In fact, yeah, because they did a number nine and they did a number nine A. I think the nine A has got a swivel base. So you can buy it, well you could, you can't anymore. We might be able to find one. Uh, you can buy a swivel base for this, just like that number 75 over there. But these are pre Second World War. So this is probably similar age, maybe a touch older than the number 75 that you've just seen. I got this from a reclamation yard and I've only had this one about three weeks now. How much did I pay for it? I almost didn't tell you. 25 quid. Dude. So what's that? $35? You've got, this probably crosses over between that vice and the leg vice in terms of the clamping pressure. And it's such a heavy, heavy casting. Parkinson's had this kind of trademark of what they called the perfect vice. Um, this one is a Model F because of the heavy casting and also quite usefully, I'll just hang that over the there to show you. So what you have is you have a quick, quick release on that one, which makes it really quite useful for going from clamping small to large kind of items. But I mean, look at that in there, you know, something that again is, you know, 70, 80 years old. Look at that, it's hardly, it's obviously been used, but I think in a lot of respects, it's probably been cared for. Oh, poor spider, I've just killed a spider that was obviously living in there that I didn't know about. Oh, look, and there's a little nail from the previous owner. That can get thrown away. Uh, yeah, sorry spider, I didn't mean to kill you there. Um, but it is, it's just got, I don't know what it is about this one. It's the kind of shape of it, isn't it? It's all these kind of bulbous, you know, all these, you know, it's just a beautiful shape. This one is going to go in the new workshop for definites. I mean, I can imagine people are already sat there going, Jesus Christ, how many vices do you need? I think I'm going to probably use them all. <laughs> What's 25 quid? Five beers in this country? I mean, it's horrific how expensive beer is in this country, but... Five... Not everything is a unit of alcohol, Al. Well. well, it's a good way of measuring things, though, <laughs> isn't it? You know, if you're honest. Great vice if you, you know, probably more of an auto workshop vice. This doesn't want, this one doesn't have pipe bending kind of bits and pieces, but it's a, it's a hell of a piece of kit. Can't pass them up when I see them. If they're a bargain, I've just got to have them. I do tend to now... I tend to buy them if there's something unique about them. And I, when I say unique, there's nothing unique about kind of quick release on a vice. But what, what it is, is I don't have a big vice like this with quick release. So, you know, hence why I purchased that one. 
Vices are your vice, aren't they? Well, they are, mate, yeah. As, as this video is uh, obviously kind of telling you. I like English ones. I like them when they're a little bit unusual. I don't tend to buy modern vices. So, in fact, I don't buy modern vices. I only buy these antique ones. They have to be perfect. They can't be chipped. I don't want them if they're chipped. They have to be perfect. It's not because I'm trying to kind of like profiteer on these things. I'm not really interested in selling them. I enjoy kind of refurbing them and hopefully putting them to use. You know, maybe this one will overtake the leg vice. I very much doubt it because that is just, I just love that vice. And it's so nice to have that kind of, I suppose, connection with something that kind of dates from, you know, 100, 170 years ago and you're still, it's in my workshop and it's used on a daily basis. I mean, isn't that just a testament to how well things used to be made? And almost a damning indictment of where we are now with kind of this modern raft of garbage that, you know, is meant to pass as quality. I mean, I think one of the main things that you always realise about decent tools is they were made in days and years gone by, they were made to such a high standard that that standard couldn't be maintained and that it almost put the businesses out of business because they were striving for such kind of high levels. You know, you've got all these kind of acronyms like perfect vice, you know, because as far as they were concerned, it, it was, it was as perfect as a vice can be. It had that mass, it's got that, you know, density, it's got that kind of ability to clamp something and hold it absolutely kind of full on. Anyway, lovely vice, kind of looking forward to getting that one refurbed. We might do a vid on that one, I'll just show you what I do. I don't go, I don't go mental when I'm doing this. I kind of, if anything, I like to leave them. It's like that one there. I like to leave them as if they're, as if they haven't been done. I don't want them all gleaming and shining at me and I don't want them all covered in like brand new, you know, burgundy paint. This one's still got a little bit of that finish. These vices were burgundy when they were kind of first. I forget what color those ones were. I think they were red or blue. Cause that's a record. So record later would be red. And I think when that one was out, it was blue. So this one, here you go, you get this beautiful old English, Victorian, Edwardian burgundy. Um, and Parkinson's vice were always that color. Beautiful thing though. Sure that would serve someone, you know, that'll serve someone for another couple hundred years, that. Anyway, we'll push this one aside and let's have a look at a bit of a novelty, shall we? I mean, actually, that's something for this video. If people would like to see us um, refurb or what we do to one of those vices to refurb it, stick it in the comments and we'll probably get to that relatively quickly. Okay, so now something completely different. So, what have we got here? Well, this is a classic example of, I suppose this in a manner of speaking, I'll just swap with Mark there. What these are called is the Stuart handy worker. Okay, so well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at its features. Um, okay, so what have we got? Look at this handle. I mean, just look at that. Isn't that absolutely stunning to work? So what have we got here though? Well, let's start with the easy stuff first. So we have a detachable anvil, a collection of sawdust, so, detachable anvil. Now, I do hear that these come with a flat plate on here, um, with a clamping kind of thing on it. I don't, that's the only piece that's missing, but I think that was done as a separate, but there you go. That's the underside of the anvil. What would I say about this? Fits in there, so there's a slight dovetail there. So it grips in the front, drops on the back. You can see where the Record 75 got its idea for this anvil from, can't you? Very, very similar. I mean, this goes a little bit further in that you've got like some really small blacksmithing tools to go with this one. To the best of my knowledge, this dates from about 1920 and you don't tend to see them much later than that in this country. So I believe they're an American tool. So I think this might have come over pre First World War, post First World War. Um, really good. What would I say? Again, I wouldn't want to use that anvil just because this is now actually, to be quite frank, these are really sought after. They're quite rare. They're rare complete anyway. They're rare in this condition. They did have a nameplate, but, oh mate, no. I can't tell you, well, that is that is missing. But other than that, this one is completely complete. So what have we got? We've got our detachable anvil. 
Farag commercial blacksmithing enterprise back in 1920. It does come with a couple of tools. So we've got, um, I mean, this one's stamped up Champion England. So I think this is actually probably, it's got a hardy hole, but it doesn't have a, uh, I don't think it can, I don't know if that's a original tool, but I think it might be. You've got kind of your jaws here. What are they? Let's have a look. They look like four inch. Yeah, four inch jaws. So we'll open her up. What have we got here? That serrated jaw there. And this here. So we've got a pipe jaw. So you can hold circular elements. It's got its own little slider. Let me just get that in a little bit to show you how it works. There you go. So, you know, you can kind of clamp circular items. So I suppose you can sit there and you can bend that. You can do all sorts of stuff. But what else has it got out? What else has it got out? Well, Hurry up, my battery's running out. Is it? Mm. Oh my God, we better get on quick. Uh, what else has it got out? Well, it's got this. Let me show you its features. Um, I don't like drifting the pin out of this, but I think we're going to have to because you're going to insist upon it. Um, I like to keep it in Let me show you its features. I uh, can't remember what we do here. I can't remember how we get this in. Oh, that's how. It's been a while since I've used this one, so that fits in there. Look at this. I mean, this is this is where it just goes a bit kind of completely and utterly bonkers. But still, that just kind of shows an era when, you know, people did sit and think. You know, if you think if you were like, a, you know, in your wagon in the Wild West, you know, the tail end of the whole kind of pioneering kind of America thing. Um, this would have been quite a tool. So that fits on there. I'm just going to put that little drift pin back in. Get it the right way around. I think that's the way it goes. Yeah, um, I won't go any further than that. But what is it? I can hear you shout. Uh, oh God. So there's a little, basically that, and I do have it. I better show it, just give us a minute. You've seen me kind of just clip this on. Your grinding stone would sit in there. That obviously tightens it onto the... onto oh, the tool shot there? Yeah, so it would have a grindstone in there. This did actually come with a grindstone, but I uh, can't remember where I've put it. Um, and then what you have is you have a very useful... Drop it on the floor. But we have a... Quite a nice adjustable... God, it's all a bit stiff. I haven't messed with this too much, this one. So yeah, look. Um, you can see that doesn't line up, but you can see it's got the ability to, it's got the adjustability to kind of move out there and obviously clamp on. And then you've got a tool rest. It sits there and screws into there. Um, and actually this, quite usefully, can't remember which one's which. Oh, here we go. I always think this is funny because if there's only one of you in the workshop and okay let's pretend that this is bolted down but you're trying to sharpen a chisel here you've got your grindstone turning there and you've got to turn this handle so it's almost the kind of thing you wish you had a son or a helper to kind of come along and kind of do the turning because um, it, uh, it would help in a big way and I actually think this one if I'm not mistaken let's just have a little look I think this one is yeah look that's kind of with no ratio to it. So it's one speed, two speeds, three speeds, and the original handle. It is my favorite, this one. Um, for no other reason than I just love that wheel. I don't use it. It sits in the bottom of the tool trunk uh, quite disappointingly, but it's one of those things I'd be scared of hurting it or breaking it So it sits there now these let me tell you this is gonna make people sick again uh, I was given this I was given this by a, a, a lovely old lady who lives in a mill and um, It was her husband's and she doesn't know where she got it from. She let me go through her entire um, the entire kind of ha uh, shed to find all these bits that go with it. Initially she kind of gave it to me just as it was and she said oh well, you can have that. 
Um, I was absolutely overjoyed because it's just such a ridiculous little thing. I think I've seen one or two of them in real life um, and there's one or two of them on eBay but um, anyway this is hopefully the best review of it and actually I would say Mark for you it's probably worth putting this down as a Stuart Handy Vice and other Vice reviews because there's about two videos and they don't go into any of the detail of taking all... They, one guy does take all the bits off but he doesn't say anything and it's such a shame because they are such a brilliant, ridiculous little kind of part of history. So this is American you say? I think it's American. It's a Stuart Handy worker um, but we're, we're kind of like at that point where it's the beginning of the beginning of maybe maybe it's not the beginning of the multi-tool but it's certainly God, I need a fucking how much are they going for give me give, what how much how much would you pay for one of those how old is it 1920s very rare very rare very rare when they're complete oh so we've talked 500 about... quid Probably, I think if someone really wanted it, and this one in particular being in this condition, bang, yeah. 500 quid? Yeah, they sell at 300 and they're fairly tatty. Right. You can pick up ones that are missing components or are literally, you know, when I say missing components, what I mean is that like, you know, you'll, you'll see them online and someone's got, oh, you know, there you go, and this is it, and this is all they've got, and then one of these is broken off and it's not there. And it's like, oh, you know, 150 quid, and it's like, mate, it's scrap, it's missing everything. And you've got all the bits with it as well. All the bits. And Ooh. it's still got its original finish on it for what that's worth. Um, I mean, you know, I'd, I'd, it, it would be nice to use it, but I'm almost scared to use it because it is, it is rare and it is worth, you know. I love this thing. And in the new workshop, I will probably mount it, but I very much doubt I'll be doing any really heavy work. It's more of a talking piece. I think this wants to be mounted to a table, like our industrial coffee table, and kind of just have it as part of that because it's so, it's so tactile. I, I just love that handle. You feel like you, you feel like you're in a steam engine working that. You know, it's just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Love it. Uh, don't ask me if I'll sell it because I won't. Ironically, I think the Stuart's Stuart Handy Helper is like a beer. You've only got to see one to want one. Uh, yeah, other end of the market, um, hand vices. Um, these, I mean, I've got two sizes here. That one, the wing nut's broken. We should really make another wing nut for that one. I think that'll be a little project at some point. These things, absolutely essential when you're kind of doing like little detail bits of grinding work. When I'm making my escutcheons for doors, I use these things quite a lot um, because they're brilliant. What I actually do is I clamp whatever I want to say hand file in there. I can then stick that in the vise and I can work on it. It cants my work 90 degrees to the jaw as well. So that sometimes is something I want to do if I'm working on a very small component or say I'm trying to polish the head of a, um, uh, a screw that I've made or a rivet or something like that. You clamp it in there straight onto there if it's too, um, too small to hold. They're really good. I mean again I pick these up whenever I see them at car boot sales and I tend to not pay a great deal of money for them but they're a really helpful little tool you know you're, you're holding a small element of work and you want to cut it off with a cut off disc brilliant because obviously this absorbs all the heat so the heat isn't getting into your hands you're not trying to hold something and kind of grind it at the same time which we've all been guilty of let's be honest um yeah brilliant little tool um you know i'd, I'd recommend if you see them buy them they're fantastic kind of one of those forgotten things what do you do nowadays you grab a pair of bloody mole grips you clamp it on them it swings from one side to the other you know you're like Ew. well there you go there's your that's what you need keep your eyes out for them because usually people don't value them they get sold for nothing hand vices should we ask the viewers to send in their favorite 
No, vice? I'm not interested. You're not interested? <laughs> no, absolutely. Send us in some photos of your vices. Uh, give us, um, you know, give us reviews of them if you like. Send us a few photos. We'd be interested to see what you guys are kind of using on a daily basis. I mean, it'll be interesting to see if there's anything that I've kind of missed out there. I've kind of, on these leg vices particularly, um, there are some monsters out there. I saw a picture of one and it's like this and it's just got these big kind of cantilevers and it's like, what was that used for? Um, working on the railroad. Working on the railroad, like Mark says, or some massive steel works, God knows, but you know, they're fantastic bits of kit. Um, you know, uh, what would I say? You see more and more and more people are using these leg vices. Um, you know, so inevitably the price of them is going to go up and, you know, if you're going to a guy that deals in antique tools, he isn't going to sell you one of these for 25 quid. But, you know, in England at least, they're still out there because, you know, this is what's so depressing about England is that, you know, it's seemingly a lot of people just have no value. They don't hold any value in tools like this. Grandpa had a shed full of tools. What did Grandma do with it? She sold it to a man who turned up on the doorstep for 25 quid. I mean, I'm not saying I ripped anyone off. This was an auction, you know. Its commercial value in that auction was £25. Now, to me, get yourself to a bloody auction because I would have paid way more than 25 quid for this. I don't know, I might have gone to 100 quid for that because I'm sure it's worth every penny of it. So, you know, there are bargains out there, in this country at least. I think the Americans have a far greater appreciation of stuff like this than we do. Maybe we're playing catch-up or maybe we just don't care. I mean, I know I do, and I'm sure everyone who's watching in England does, but then you're in a, a minority of makers and people who enjoy watching maker videos who kind of like, you know, do value this stuff and do appreciate our English heritage. If you think about it, this little guy here has been around for most of the Industrial Revolution and it's still in a workshop today doing, you know, working on a daily basis. Amazing. So what should people do if they like this video? Like, subscribe and comment, uh, send us your photos. Uh, we do, we kind of tend to put a film out and then what we do is we kind of watch the comments over the next kind of two or three days. So we do try to answer each one or, you know, if you ask us a question, we try and get back to you. If it's something non-technical, you might get Mark, camera boy, answering. If it's something more technical, Mark will kind of give me a nod and or I'll answer because I do, you know, we both, I think I'll do that again. Like, subscribe, tell your friends if you think they'd like it. Uh, do spend some time and get out into the shop yourself and create something. Oh, I think I stole that off Black Bear Forge. Uh, send us your photos of your vices or other vices you found. Oh, there's a beautiful little bird out there. Look at him. No, oh, look at him. Something shiny. No, look at him there. Oh, he's off. We do try to get kind of, we do try to, well, we do. It's like I've got my mind just like a butterfly, isn't it, man? Yeah, it's uh, such a nightmare to cut. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for, thanks for joining us today. I hope that was kind of interesting. Um, obviously, I've got a huge problem with vices, but um, maybe you have too. So you, maybe with like kindred spirits, you could send us some photos of your vices or get in touch, point us to your films on your vices. Um, nothing rude, though. Nothing rude. We're Not talking like, to you, Sparky. Nothing with feet and weeing or anything mm. like that. Yeah. No pee tapes. <laughs> no pee tapes. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Topical. Yeah. Why? Weeing on prostitutes. Jesus H. Corbyn. Uh, what a horrific man. Um, anyway, uh, let's hope he doesn't see this because he's a hater. Uh, yeah, look, thanks for joining us. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining us. Light. Light a fag. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, Get in touch with your vices that you kind of enjoy taking part in. Not those ones. Uh, that's going to end up badly. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just. I think you've got something there. <laughs> Jesus, I'm off. Just on say bye bye. Oh, bye <laughs> from Dirty Chef Creations. Camera boy and Uncle Al yeah. dishing it out, looking for scraps. Yeah, <laughs> living on scraps. <laughs>